Let's talk about brain health. Now, Brain Awareness Week was just this past March 13th through the 19th. And we, uh, of course, see an emphasis on physical health and on mental health, all of those very important. But brain health has been one of those that has not been specifically addressed. Joining us now to talk more about it, Dr. Michael Netsley, the CEO of Extend My Runway. Michael, great to have you on the show. Welcome. Good morning, and it's great to be back. Brain morning, health. Michael. <laughs> brain, <laughs> brain health, Michael. Why? Tell, tell us, first of all, what does brain health actually cover? What does it mean? Great question, because there, there's so much conversation today about mental health, and yeah. that's really dealing with our emotional state. Brain health is a much larger, more of an umbrella concept, and it really looks at the overall health and well-being of the entire brain mm. and can it perform the functions that well we needed to every day are we able to judge and weight risk for example how effectively can you learn how well is your memory operating mm. these are just simple examples no there's a, you know we can make a lot of uh, quips and jokes around my own personal brain function i, I think <laughs> uh, certain times a day but but this is a really serious topic you know my mom had dementia uh, and passed away uh, just last year. Many folks in Singapore, their their elderly relatives have have some sort of a brain impairment, if I can put it that way. It could be from a stroke, or it could be again dementia, Alzheimer's, something like that. When when we look at why aren't we getting the sort of notice, or or um, you know when we think about mental health, it's it's all over the place. We think about physical health, but we're we're still not society still isn't really. Well, they're talking about it, but they're not really putting the emphasis on it, perhaps, that should be giving, giving our aging population. Why, do you have any thoughts on why that is? Yes. Usually the research lags behind at a societal level 20 to 40 years. Oh. And most of the oh. research we're looking at right now in terms of the healthy aging brain and aging societies, it's maybe 20, 25 years old. So in many ways, we're at the front end of all of this research finding its way to society, but unfortunately, societies are already aged. Singapore is the world's fastest aging society, mm. and this, this science needs to find its way into the average household today. Anything, uh, Juliana, you want to jump in? You're, I mean, you're the scientist, not me. Uh, I, I would rely on you to have great questions. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm a bit distracted right now because I'm looking at my WhatsApp business group, yeah. and I have people, Ping Ping, I have John, I have Anna. They are all gushing about you, Michael. Oh, my god! They gosh. said that you I were the ex-professor <laughs> at the Singapore Management yeah. University, yeah. Lee Kong Chien School of Business, and from 2004 to 2008 said, one of them said that you were their corporate comms professor. Anna says that you were, she was your teaching assistant. Oh, my. 20 <laughs> years ago, John said, wait, same, wait. me too. Wow. I, I, well, so Michael's a, he's a, a superstar. Club right here. Well, here, here, here's the other reason why we're talking about brain health, because if that was from 20 years ago, obviously <laughs> I'm moving into that aging population. Oh, but, but importantly, Ping Ping says, because we just took a selfie, she says you have not aged at all, <laughs> and you need to share us your skincare secrets, but I think it has something to do with brain health. So you must have done something right. Oh, I, I, hope, I hope so. There could be some debate about that, Michael. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. my wife might have a comment <laughs> or two on this one. But, uh... something, is going, something is going right over here. Please share those tips with us. Well, for, for me, it, it really starts with a brain-first approach. And as I've looked at all of the research, it doesn't necessarily work the other way around, that you can take care of your heart health or your physical health. And there will be definitely some benefits to the brain. But if you begin with a brain health agenda first, you will inherently be taking care of the entire organ while also taking care of your heart health, your physical health, and and so mm, on. So mm. it's just simply a more complete approach to go brain first. We're talking about brain health uh, with Dr. Dr. Michael Netsley, CEO of Extend My Runway. All right, so there are a number of things happening. There's a study that's going on that's just starting this year on brain health in Singapore. 
where, where, wh how are we moving this ball forward now that we've discussed the fact that it hasn't been moved forward enough in recent years? So what I'm doing with that study, and thank you for mentioning it, because if there are listeners who want to get involved, uh, we can certainly make spaces available for them. But what we're doing is partnering with the Center for Brain Health, which is really the world's leader in terms of the healthy aging brain. Mm -hmm. And what they have is something called the Brain Health Index, where I can literally, in a non-invasive way, you don't have to put a contraption <laughs> on your head. You're not going to take our brains apart, We're are you? We're not going to cut anything open. <laughs> and we can literally measure the health of your brain and the ability to focus, the ability to think innovatively, mm. uh, your connectedness with other people, the lifestyle habits that affect that brain health. And we're doing, it's a six month study, pre and post test. So nice. anybody who joins gets uh, two free assessments, two free coaching sessions with me, but most importantly, mm. it is the first control group brain health study in Singapore that I am aware of. Is this ongoing right now? Just started. Uh, we've got maybe our first 18 or so people in. Right. and I'm, uh, I'm going to be doing it as well. But are there, there any go. interventions? Yep. Are there interventions that you're doing? Because you're, you're probably trying to assess for, for a control group and intervention group. Ex bingo. So what we're doing is we're studying different dosages of that intervention to see if different levels of feedback to you have an impact on your overall brain health when you repeat it. Could you share those interventions with us? Sure. So in, in general, without giving too much away, what I like to do is usually begin with what I call essentials and then complements. Essentials are sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Mm -hmm. Sleep, and nutrition, it's, exercise. And exercise. And it's really amazing. Uh, people often think of their brain as like a sliding scale. So I've gotten a little bit too little sleep. So my brain is probably a little bit less optimal. No, 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 no. You, it's a drastic drop. Here's mm. a simple example. You drop below six and a half hours of sleep. Working memory practically shuts down. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. So, so really? if you've ever wondered, yeah, so it's Friday night. You order your pizza. Have you ever had to look at that OTP twice to get it right? <laughs> I rest my case. All of you who are laughing, I rest my All case. All right, so say that again about six hours, uh, the amount of sleep and what, what that actually does. That was not an ironic question. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a mom who has had kids well, stay up all night, I can tell you, you know, it's a brain fog when you don't get enough sleep. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get enough sleep for years. I felt like I had the fog in my brain all the time. I couldn't think clearly. Exactly, exactly. So uh, University of Pennsylvania study, this is fascinating. They put people into three groups, eight hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, and then an all-nighter. What they found is after about seven or nine consecutive days of getting six hours of sleep, your performance the next morning was the same as somebody who performed an all-nighter. Wow. Hmm. Now, how many Which, of us we sleep know six is, hours a night yeah. regularly? Yeah. There is a podcast that I really like to listen to, and mm. it's by uh, Andrew Huberman of Andrew's Stanford. Great. And he talks about sleep. He talks about the same concept that if you just sleep a little bit less, you almost look like you're, you had spent an all-nighter yeah, uh, or like a shift worker. Yeah. And so that's what I mean is saying it's not a sliding scale. This functionality in the brain, which is what brain health measures, it shuts down. Hmm. Can wow. we ever repay our sleep debt? No. Can you I cannot. sleep on the weekend and just do a 12 hour? Can you catch up? You cannot catch up. Oh, now, you can get some sleep and feel better, but you never really catch up. Uh, Dr. Matthew Walker, who also has a podcast, uh, is brilliant on this particular topic. You really need a routine. What about people who are naturally, physiologically low level sleepers? What about people who sleep only four to five hours a night? I know people like that. Now, there is a, a bell curve here. There's a population. So mm -hmm. on the one hand, there will be people in that population who are incredibly efficient sleepers, and they may go for five hours and be fine. And I'm sure, I'm sure we've got listeners going, oh, that's me, that's me. Mm -hmm. It's about 0.1% of the population. It's not you. 
what's happened is you've become accustomed to mm. poor sleep and poor performance and you think it's normal. Wow. Well, Michael, we got some questions coming in on Facebook Live on our chat. Uh, first of all, Stanley C., can I volunteer? So, Absolutely. Okay. Yes. How And we can say this again or maybe even put it in the chat as well, but how would people sign up for this? Okay. So the easiest way is going to be to connect with me directly. LinkedIn is a great way of doing that. And what I'll do is I'll simply then provide people a hyperlink mm -hmm. where they would be able to join this study and uh, again give give singapore its first baseline nice all right next uh comment from aloysius lee is good morning dr michael how can we delay slash prevent dementia what is the best brain exercise okay this is a great question and uh, this came from the global brain health institute earlier this year mm. 50% of dementia cases are preventable. 50% of stroke cases are preventable. What? Yes, 50%. Wow. Okay, you got to you got to tell us how because that's what everybody that's the next question, right? <laughs> so, change your lifestyle, change your behavior mm. and you can dramatically decrease the risk. Now, hmm. there's nothing that's going to guarantee it. Okay. But Cuz isn't some, isn't some of that um genetic? Exactly. You can't exactly. change the genetic. Uh, there's a package, brand new right? study came out last month that says about 41% of this is genetic. So, so we can't control, yeah. you know, 41% of the impact, but that's 59% of the risk you can influence and manage. Okay. So what's the best thinking now about how to manage that? Sleep, exercise, nutrition. Right. And getting that foundation and that routine built into your life regularly. Wow. Now, Michael, I, sorry, you were going to say? I was going to say, I've got some bad news for you as well. <laughs> Why don't you hold off on that until Juliana okay. asks her I've question? I've a question because I've written this down, <laughs> sleep, nutrition, and exercise. And to be honest, I've heard that before. It's very basic. Could you tell me about stress? Because I have a lot of stress at work. Mm. And that's why I'm taking a sabbatical to deal with the stress I have. So how does stress factor into all of this? Stress is a massive negative influence on all aspects of brain health. Oh, my gosh. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, though, right? I mean, that totally makes sense. So yeah. if we were to continue beyond those fundamentals, stress management would be fourth on my list. Okay. Sorry to say this. Getting rid of alcohol would alcohol. be fifth on my list. Okay. Smoking? And multitasking is just the worst. Multitasking. Brain, horrible brain drain. Wow. Horrible you didn't mention smoking. Drain. What about smoking? Smoking, uh, that one I, I, I apologize. I just simply took for granted. Yes, the, the <laughs> correlation between uh, smoking, health risks, brain health risks is incredibly strong. Hmm. You've got to get this stuff out of your life. Hmm. And here's, here's why. Today... With all the gains in physical health and longevity, the healthy body, on average, is outliving the healthy brain by 20 years. That means wow. you're going to have 20 healthy years that are brain fog or worse. I don't want to live that way. I don't want to age that you way. You know, we saw that with my mom. It was probably about 15 years. Three family members for me, same thing. Yeah, she yeah. held on physically, but... Mentally, you know, mm, not that's, so good. That's the thing. I've been to many of these conferences that talk about, we, we talk about in the news about longevity. So our populations are aging and are living longer. Yeah. But we need yeah. to talk about how much of those years are lived healthily. Yeah, how we can so, live better. Yeah, right? better. So mm. I, I don't want to live longer, you know. Mm. Mm. I want to live longer while I'm still around, while I'm still active. I can think I'm, I'm still present. Yep. More healthy years yeah. in the middle. I don't not mind more to live, you know, a shorter years. life. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's the whole goal. And what makes this even more pressing is when we look at the discoveries that are on the near horizon, things that could easily add another decade to our lifespan, now, you know, you're, you're now looking at a 30-year gap between brain health and physical health hmm. so all the more reason to start investing in taking care of this this organ between our ears now the for those of us who are a little bit older 
is it ever is it ever too late to start this obviously it's better if you can start when you're young in your 20s or 30s or even younger than that but if you're older if you're in your 50s or 60s can you still get value from you know better sleep better nutrition better exercise it is never too late and here's in going back to my partner uh the the center for brain health what their research has shown is that through science-backed methods not the stuff you get off the fun cutesy apps on your phone <laughs> but through science-backed methods not only can you hit the pause button on cognitive decline but in approximately one out of three cases they even started to reverse it hmm. So your brain would get younger if you use the right methods. Wow. Um, A quick question here from Rob Salisbury. Uh, welcome back, Michael. Love your segment. Um, how important is getting fresh air from forests, uh, from the you know jungle here in Singapore, for example, uh, along the sea, uh, near the ocean to reduce our stress, to optimize our brain mojo? Is there, is there an environmental factor of getting out of the stress of the concrete jungle? And into a real jungle. But but another point to look at from that question yeah. is about how pollution can and be, pollution be, be as dangerous well. because yep. there's pollution and soot and God knows what yep. in, the, in yes. the air. Yes. So environment has a profound impact on this. So this is why for me, all of the work with brain health begins with behavioral hmm. rather than anything that would be invasive. Okay. And uh, Rob, to Rob's question, there's actually several recent studies talking about the value of time in a forest, or I should expect that an ocean side would be identical to this. Mm. But the stress relief and the reduction of the neurochemicals that are a stress response, which if they're in their brain too long, actually becomes a bad thing. But the clearing out of those neurochemicals, the cleansing of the mind, the stress reduction, nature is a very, very powerful way of accomplishing hmm. that. Um, and, and carrying on from that, you know, when I exercise, whether I'm cycling or walking, I want to listen to music, I want to listen to podcasts, you know, et cetera. And I know you're a big runner as well, um, Michael. Is there any research to indicate that if we are exercising, we should not have anything on, but we should be connecting with the world around us in a different way. So is having that stuff always going on in your head, is that a, is that a problem, a hindrance toward better brain health? Or is there, is there any research on that? I actually, what I've seen is the, the debate kind of going both ways. And I wouldn't say it's a big debate yet. And far more important, Glenn, I would say when you're out doing your jog, are you happy? Mm. That I think is the critical thing. And so I have, uh, you know, we have a mutual friend who's, who runs triathlons and he listens to nothing mm. and that makes him happy. I'll put on my favorite, I'll show my age here, eighties rock and roll <laughs> and yeah. it makes me happy. Yeah. And what I find is about five kilometers in the runner's high kicks in. And that's actually when I do my best thinking of the day. Oh, okay. So as long as you're happy and your mind clears, as opposed to dwelling on something, yep, all good. Michael, we do have to leave it there. Uh, again, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, whether they have more questions or they want to perhaps take part in this brain study that's going on? How do they find you? So LinkedIn, simply look for Michael Netzley, N-E-T-Z-L-E-Y. I think there's only two of those people in the world. I'm the only one. In I Singapore. pasted it in the Facebook chat. You're the best one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and yeah, I'm the best one. And then uh, just DM me and I'll get you the link directly to the type form to, to sign up. Michael, thanks for this. It's been a fascinating session. We will, of course, have you on as the, as the, uh, as the, um, uh, the research is continuing. There's always something to learn. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael. Thank you. Nice to meet you.